crowds nowadays, and I, I love to see the, the tricolor. The tricolor is a flag under which our patriots of 1916 took up arms, proclaimed the proclamation, and gave their lives. But across the street here yesterday, and it's becoming quite common at left-wing demonstrations, is the flag of Palestine. Now, I have nothing in particular against Palestinians. In fact, I really don't think about Palestinians at all. And I have nothing in particular against Israel either. I don't really think about Israel at all. What I am wondering, though, is why anybody in this Irish Republic would be carrying a foreign flag of either country or indeed any country other than the tricolor of the Irish Republic. Because the promises made, and they were promises meant, and they were promises made for in blood and sacrifice. The promises made in the 1916 proclamation of the Republic have not been fulfilled. They have not been fulfilled by Fine Gael, although in fairness to Fine Gael, they never pretended that they were going to. They were the Free State Party from the beginning. Let me offer you another unorthodox view. Those Fine Gael bastards shot Michael Collins in bail. <laughs> now take me to court and we'll have the libel case on who shot Michael Collins at the behest of the British government. Was it not our own William T. Cosgrave? on behalf of the British government as a British agent and there was the end of the Irish Republic dead in the road tied in bail of law and after them then came Fianna Fáil the Republican Party you know that Fianna Fáil, most people don't know this, but if you're old enough, uh, Fianna Fáil had six principles at one point. Um, I, they, were, they were simple enough. They were the restoration of the Irish language, the restoration of Irish unity, the independence of the Irish nation, and so forth. In 1998, they quietly dropped them off the ordination. They quietly removed the six principles. Now, since they haven't talked about them in about 40 years, nobody actually noticed they did that, but they did do that. They did do that. So Fianna Foyle officially declared itself, officially declared itself to stand for absolutely nothing. But they had the audacity nonetheless, they had the audacity nonetheless to keep the caption in brackets after their name, the Republican Party. Well, I ask you the question, what is a republic? What is a republic if it is not a place that defends its people? What is a republic if it is not a place which has citizens? And there is a huge difference. And it was a huge difference that we fought for in 1916, which was whether we were to be citizens of a republic, which is to say a free people, or whether we were to be subjects. And to me, it doesn't really matter whether that's subjects to the British crown or whether that's subjects to the crown heads in Brussels. It doesn't really matter to me whether it's the kings and queens of international finance that wear the crown the kings and queens of international finance represented most finely here by the Google Corporation, the mouthpiece of corporate America, not the voice piece by due 
of the people of America because they have made every effort to ensure that every election in that country is rigged the same as the abortion referendum in this country was rigged. And I don't delude myself when I say that. I don't delude myself that there aren't many, many people in this country who did vote for legalized abortion. And I don't doubt even that they are a majority, a manipulated majority, a lied to majority, and a tricked majority. But here's the thing, Greg, as some people say to me, particular as the leader of the national parties, why not focus only on mass immigration? And I get their point to this extent that there's no coming back from mass immigration. Demographics is destiny. When the Irish people become a minority in their own country, then there is no point anymore in talking about an Irish Republic. And indeed, Pierce first saw that day itself when he spoke of the last true gale. When he spoke of the last true gale, when he died, that any state that would erect itself upon the island of Ireland, whatever it should call itself, would not be the historic Irish nation. But people say to me, focus on that issue, don't talk about anything else. Mass immigration is the number one issue, and I get it. I get it, I understand it. It is the number one issue in very many ways because it's the thing you cannot go back from. But I talk about LGBTQ and whatever other letters they want. And I talk about the fact that we have introduced abortion, the killing of our own children. Abortion in port is a phrase that, 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 that's closely connected. And I talk about the general degradation of the fact that there are 10,000 people in this country homeless. I talk about the fact that our young people are immigrating to other countries because there is hope and a future there for them that this state has not given since its foundation. And I talk about it because of this. Is a degraded nation cannot res resist mass immigration. And until we find it within ourselves, until we find our own pride in being Irish, until we realize what a precious possession it is that has been handed to us by our forefathers and what we are due to hand down and obliged to hand down. For we here in this crowd or for that matter across this city. We do not own Ireland. We do not own Ireland. We have temporary custody of a place called Ireland. Temporary custody of a nation that lasts for so many thousand years back that no one can count. And will, under our obligation, last for many thousands of years to come. But in that sense, we have a huge responsibility because we are a passing company.